previously we discussed the concept of enzyme inhibition and we said there are two categories of enzyme inhibitors. We have irreversible enzyme inhibitors that bind onto the enzymes and don't let go, don't dissociate very easily. And we also have the reversible enzyme inhibitors that bind onto the enzymes but they can dissociate quite easily under specific conditions. Now, we also said we can subdivide reversible inhibitors into three types. We have competitive inhibitors, we have uncompetitive, and we have non-competitive reversible inhibitors. And what I want to focus in this lecture is how exactly do these three types of reversible inhibitors actually affect the kinetics of enzymes? How do they affect things like the turnover number, the Michaelis constant, and Vmax, the maximum velocity of that enzyme? So let's begin by focusing on competitive inhibition. So this is the equation that describes competitive inhibition. So in the absence of an inhibitor, that substrate is going to collide into and bind to the active site of the enzyme forming the functional enzyme substrate complex. And then that complex will catalyze and transform the substrate into the product, which will then dissociate and be released from that active site. Now, in the absence of an inhibitor, the curve that describes the substrate concentration to the velocity is this black curve here. And notice the black curve eventually reaches a maximum velocity. That's the point when all the active sites of all the enzymes are filled by that substrate. Now, in the presence of an inhibitor, what happens is because the inhibitor resembles that substrate, it's going to bind to that same active site. And once it bonds, it forms this enzyme inhibitor complex. And because that inhibitor is found in that active site, the substrate is not found in that active site. And so that enzyme is inhibited. Now, the thing about competitive inhibition is because the substrate binds to the same exact region as the inhibitor, if we increase the concentration of that substrate, there is a greater likelihood that the substrate is going to collide into that active site and that can displace and replace that inhibitor in the active site to form back this enzyme substrate complex. And so all we have to do to basically overcome competitive inhibitors is to increase the concentration of the substrate. And what that ultimately means is if we examine the red curve, which describes the presence of the inhibitor, if we increase the concentration of S, if we move along to the right side, along the x-axis, eventually the red curve is going to reach the same Vmax value as the black curve. And what that means is, in the presence of a competitive inhibitor, that Vmax does not actually change. And once again, this is because that inhibitor binds to the same exact section as that substrate. And so that inhibitor can be overcome by increasing the concentration of that substrate. So even though we have to increase the concentration of that substrate, eventually all those inhibitors in the active sites will be replaced with that substrate. And all the same active sites are going to be filled by that substrate in the inhibition case as in the uh, absence of the inhibitor and so the same Vmax will actually be reached. Now let's move on to fact number two about competitive inhibition and enzyme kinetics. The turnover number KCAD does not actually change, is not affected by a competitive inhibi uh, inhibitor and that can be seen from the following equation. So in our lecture, in our discussion on the turnover number, we said that the turnover number basically describes the efficiency of that active site. So, so it's basically the number of substrate molecules that can be transformed into the product molecules over some amount of time uh, per, a single, per single active site, so per enzyme. And because the turnover number is not changed, what that means is the efficiency of that active site in the presence of the inhibitor does not actually change. And this can be seen from this equation. 
if v max does not actually change and the total concentration of that enzyme that is functional does not change then kcat also does not change it remains constant and so because these two don't change the turnover number also does not change so v max doesn't change kcat doesn't change but what does change is the km the km value essentially increases and all that means is to reach the same rate in the inhibition case as in the absence of the inhibitor to reach the same rate of activity all we have to do is increase the substrate concentration to basically reach that same velocity of that enzyme and that means our km value will increase because remember the km value basically describes the vmax divided by two so when our mixture reaches a concentration of substrate that is equal to km the velocity of that enzyme will be exactly midway between the vmax and the zero point so vmax divided by two because vmax doesn't change vmax divided by two doesn't change and so if we look at the corresponding y coordinate point for the uh, at the corresponding x coordinate point for this y coordinate in the case of no inhibitor present it's here in the case of the inhibitor present it's farther along that x axis and so the km is greater so competitive inhibitors increase the parent km value so since most of the active sites are occupied by by the inhibitor a larger amount of substrate needs to be present to actually overcome and displace that inhibitor to reach that same enzyme rate and this means a higher amount of substrate is actually needed to reach that rate of vmax divided by two now what this also means is because as the km increases the affinity of that substrate for the active side decreases and that's because now we have an inhibitor that has a higher affinity for that active side and so we have to increase the number of substrate molecules to increase the likelihood of collision with that active side to actually displace and replace that inhibitor in the active side now let's move on to uncompetitive inhibition in this type of inhibition the only time the inhibitor can bind onto that enzyme is when the substrate is bound to that enzyme so we have the substrate collides and binds into the active site of the enzyme and once we form the enzyme substrate complex that creates a conformational change that creates this brand new pocket the allosteric side that the inhibitor can now bind to now in the absence of the inhibitor the enzyme substrate complex will simply form the product and then the product will dissociate but in the presence of the inhibitor that inhibitor will bind onto that brand new allosteric site found on the enzyme substrate complex and that will form the enzyme substrate uh, inhibitor complex and once this complex is formed no reaction will take place and that's because once the inhibitor binds onto the enzyme substrate complex it will keep that uh, substrate inside that active site and that active site will not be able to catalyze the transformation of that substrate into that particular product now this leads us directly into point number one uncompetitive inhibitors actually decrease the vmax value and that's because they decrease the number of enzyme substrate complexes that are efficient that are functional that can actually convert the substrate into that particular product so uncompetitive inhibitors bind to the enzyme substrate complex and decrease the total number of functional enzymes and we can see how that affects vmax by looking at this particular equation so if we rearrange this equation we get this equation here and what it basically tells us is the vmax is reached 
when all the active sites are filled with that particular substrate. And in this particular case, because we decrease the total number of functional enzymes, we decrease this quantity because some of them are transformed into this quantity, we decrease the Vmax value. Now, what about the KCAT? What about the turnover number? Well, the turnover number basically describes the ability of that active side to actually transform the substrate molecules into the product molecules per unit time. Now, because when the, en when the inhibitor is not bound to that particular enzyme substrate complex, the active site's ability or efficiency to change that uh, substrate to the product doesn't actually change, we see that the KCAT value in uncompetitive inhibition also doesn't actually change, it remains the same. So the KCAT value in this equation remains unchanged. But because this changes decreases, the Vmax also decreases. And finally, what about, what about that KM value? What happens to the Michaelis constant? Well, to answer that question, let's take a look at the following equation. So when that inhib so remember KM the Michaelis constant describes the affinity of that particular substrate to the active site. If KM increases, the affinity decreases. If KM decreases, the affinity increases. So what happens in the presence of the inhibitor? Well, when the inhibitor binds onto the enzyme substrate complex, what happens is, once we form the enzyme substrate inhibitor complex, that basic, that inhibitor, by binding onto that complex, it prevents that substrate from actually leaving that active site. And what that means is, because that active site does not release that substrate, the affinity of that substrate for the enzyme increases. And if the affinity of that enzyme and if the affinity of the substrate for the active side of the enzyme increases when the inhibitor binds onto the complex, the KM value decreases. And that's one way that we can explain how the KM actually decreases. Another way of explaining it is in the following manner. So, since the total number of functional enzymes decreases and the Vmax decreases, that means we need to add a lower concentration of that substrate to actually reach Vmax divided by 2. And that's why the KM decreases. So if we compare no inhibitor to inhibitor present, we see that the Vmax is lower in the presence of the inhibitor and the KM value is closer, it's more to the left side along the x-axis. So the parent KM decreases compared to this KM. So let's move on to the final one, non-competitive inhibition. So in non-competitive inhibition on that enzyme, there is a permanent allosteric site that is present. And what that means is that inhibitor can bind onto that enzyme regardless of whether or not that substrate is actually bound onto that active site. And so this is the equation that describes this process. So in the absence of the inhibitor, the substrate is going to bind to the active site of the enzyme, forming the enzyme substrate complex, and that will transform the substrate of the product, and then the product will be released. Now, in the presence of the inhibitor, that inhibitor can either bind onto that individual enzyme forming that enzyme inhibitor complex, or it can bind onto the enzyme substrate complex to form that particular enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. And notice that if we form the enzyme inhibitor complex, that doesn't change the likelihood that the substrate is going to bind to that enzyme and that is important in, in part three as we'll see in just a moment. So let's begin with one.
the VMAX is lowered and the VMAX is lowered for the same reason that the VMAX is lowered in this uncompetitive inhibition case. So we simply decrease the number of active sites, the number of enzymes that are functional. And if we decrease that value, we essentially decrease the VMAX. So since some number of inhibitors are bound to the enzyme at any given moment in time, and that inhibits the functionality of the enzyme, less functional enzymes will be present and so VMAX will decrease. Now, let's move on to two. The KCAT is lowered. The KCAT, the turnover number is lowered. And what that basically means is the efficiency of that active site in transforming the substrate into that particular product is decreased. And this makes sense. Why? Well, because as it turns out, when that enzyme binds onto that inhibitor, that inhibitor changes the shape of the active site. And so the active site is essentially no, it's, it's no longer complementary to that particular substrate. And although the substrate can bind to that active site just as likely as in the case of the absence of the inhibitor, once the substrate binds onto this enzyme inhibitor complex, that fit will not be perfect. And what that means is the active site's ability to actually